Set extensions. Much like matte paintings that they would use in old films like Star Wars, this is how video editors create brand new backgrounds from scratch. So what we're gonna be doing in today's tutorial is exporting frames of a video into Photoshop beta, generating brand new background images from scratch, bringing them back into After Effects where we will 3D track them, essentially creating a brand new background that is way cooler and cinematic. And of course this video is sponsored by my sugar daddy, Squarespace. So I have this incredible clip here in After Effects. Um, I shot this in the Maldives, and even though this is a beautiful, beautiful clip, I think we could make the background way more engaging with some good photoshopping. So right here, I wanna make it look like I am running into the distance into like a mountainous, beautiful, tropical landscape. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this frame right here in After Effects, and I'm gonna come up to Composition, Save Frame As, and file. If we look over here in the render queue, you'll see, we'll click on this button here that says Photoshop. And what we're going to do is just change it to JPEG and we will hit render. And so if we open up Photoshop beta, drag this frame extension into Photoshop just like this and bam, here it is. And what I did just off the bat is if I kind of get rid of myself really quick, I think it will do a better job at generating in general. Cause sometimes it will like randomly generate a person and we don't want that. Look, perfect. Okay, so basically I want my first set extension to maybe be some cool mountain ranges. And so I will just grab my lasso tool up here. Here, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do a mountain for each side. So I'm gonna make the selection here and type in mountains again. Ooh, you know what? I really like this here with the two little hedgestone kind of vibes. And so now I'll do a mountain for the left side and I kind of want to retain as much of the water as possible. So I'm just gonna do my lasso selection underneath and around all of this extra shit. And we will type in mountains. Ooh, I really like these ones right here. And so now our next step, if we want to like properly bring this into After Effects as a set extension. If we get rid of the background, you'll notice that it's actually within the confines of extra sky that it's generated. And the way I like to do this is I like to cut these mountains out so they're their own PNG image. It gives us the most control over how we want to blend them into the scene. We don't have to worry about all this extra sky. So what we can do to keep this really simple is instead of using the pin tool, we can come up and grab the quick selection tool and quick select the mountain just like this. And um, just for blending purposes, I will also get this water at the bottom here. I just wanna get rid of the sky. So once we have that, hit Shift Control C for uh, copy and then Shift Control V. And if we isolate everything except the mountain, we've now cut this mountain out. Boop. Now we'll do that for the second mountain. So we'll grab our quick selection tool and select all these guys and we'll get the water and shift control Z and then shift control V. And then now we have these two beautiful mountain layers. I'll name the first one mountain left and the second one mountain right. And I will select both of these, right click and hit quick export as a PNG. So now we can bring these mountains into After Effects. And so now we can just individually place them where they were in the screenshot. So we can put this mountain here. We put this mountain right here. So now when we zoom out, we can already see what we're doing. We're creating this beautiful landscape for our mountain. But as you can imagine, there's gonna be an immediate issue. They're not tracked into the scene. So for stuff that's really far in the background, the easiest way to track in this particular case is gonna be the motion tracking panel in After Effects, not a 3D track. So what we're gonna do is come up to Window and Tracker Panel, and we're gonna select our original clip and do Track Motion. And what we're gonna do is down here, we wanna check rotation and scale. And I'm just gonna find two really solid points that stand out. So I will track this black part of the boat right here. You see that kind of stands out really well. And then over here, I'll track, I'll track this little black dot like this. And I'm just going to play forward. You can tell this tracker on the right side did not play very nice. Every time the track slips, just bring it back. And now when you have all this juicy tracking data, come up to your layer, uh, your layer thing up here, new and null object. And in the tracker panel, we'll hit edit target and then we'll select null eight. 
OK and hit apply and then hit OK again. So now we have this null object that is following the tracking data of the horizon line. And so now if we go back to the moment where we can start adding our mountains, just like this, what we can now do is if we grab the parent and link pick whip and we take it to the null object that has all the tracking data on it, watch this. Now our mountain is tracked onto the scene. And now what we can do is make the, the right mountain transparent or visible and we can place it where it makes the most sense and then we grab the parent and pick whip and we take it to null six and then bam we have these two mountains that are like perfectly tracked into the back of our scene and this just right off the rip looks more cinematic than just this i mean this is cool but this even better and if we solo our subject and we grab the roto brush and we just do a quick mask of the dude. We just kind of let it do its thing. And if you get a great mask of your dude running away, now you can basically put set pieces behind him or her. Oh, and if you've rotoscoped the bottom layer, just duplicate it and uh, delete the roto brush tool so you get your background back. And so now that we've got the foundation of this, we can really go crazy here. Let's say right here in the middle, we want to put a lighthouse. So I will make this lasso tool selection and I'll type in lighthouse. Boom. These lighthouses look kind of insane. Actually, this purple one's cool. So let's, if you hit alt and click on the eyeball of this layer in Photoshop, it'll isolate just this uh, one image. And what we'll do is we'll mask this out. And so if we hit control C and then control V, we now have our lighthouse layer. I'll name this lighthouse and I will quick export this as a PNG. So now if we go back to our original After Effects composition, we can drag in our lighthouse and we'll put it behind our mask. And if we just line this up with where it was in the edit, bam, we can, we can have it right there. And then we'll use our pick whip tool to attach it to null number six. And so now it looks like we're running down the pier towards a lighthouse. And again, without all of these extra set pieces, this clip just looks like this. But now it looks like this. And of course, to really top off the background, if we hop back into Photoshop beta and we bring up just this original clip, what we can do is uh, select basically the whole sky and I'll type in beautiful cloudy sky. And then hopefully it'll give us some good cloudy background detail. Ooh, these look really nice. I really like this sky a lot. So if I alt click on this layer and solo just the sky, I will right click on this, export it as a PNG, name it sky. So bring the sky end into After Effects and bring it behind everything. We can put it just like this at the top here and grab the pick whip and link it to null number six. And you can see that the edges doesn't perfectly blend. I can kind of see the color sharp, like a sharp edge right here. So what we can do is grab the pin tool and kind of cut off the bottom of the sky. And if we hit make it subtract and then feather it a bunch. I'll expand it out, boom. That'll fix our hard edge. So now, see at the, the beginning of this, the sky isn't big enough because I didn't um, screenshot it at the right time. So if we go to our effects and presets menu and type in rep, uh, you'll see this stylized plugin called Repetile. And if we set this to unfold and then expand up, we'll kind of fix that problem for us there. So now we've got this beautiful background that we're running towards. And bam, we've created a really cool matte painting for our background. Now, if we look at the video that I made for uh, Photoshop right here, you can see that I added lots of foreground elements as well as the mountains and the lighthouse. And so that's actually a slightly different process because we're not using the 2D tracker, we're gonna use a 3D camera tracker. So now I'll show you how to make these foreground elements. Look how cool that is, by the way. That's so sick. All right, so if we solo our original layer and let's click on it, this time we're gonna do track camera. So if I make these track points real big, you can see that we've got all this incredible tracking data that we can now play with. So I've already generated 
generated a lot of foreground pieces like um, like this light post here. Um, and so we're gonna 3D track this light post into the foreground. So what we'll do is we'll click on the footage that we have 3D tracked and right here where this solid target is, we'll right click, create this solid. And then if we drop, if we hit R to drop down the orientation numbers, we're gonna zero them out. We're just gonna move it up like this so we can see that our solid is like perfectly tracked into the scene. And in our uh, project files, if we hold down Alt and click and drag our um, foreground object onto the track solid, it will just perfectly replace um, uh, our track solid. So we'll move this light post down, move the anchor point to the bottom like this and scale up the light post. And then from there, we can adjust the um, 3D rotation as needed. And so now we've added a light post and we can duplicate this and move it to the other side and adjust the rotation and basically keep duplicating this and moving it in 3D space. So we're like running down. And then this is the example from my Adobe Photoshop video, but you can basically keep rinse and repeating this process and add light posts down the entire thing. And so you're not only re creating an entire background, but you can recreate your mid-ground foreground objects with these with this trick. So now my original video, it's gonna blow your mind. My original video looked like this, but now it looks like this. Isn't that crazy? And so this is how you incorporate uh, set extensions into After Effects using Photoshop. I hope you learned something very useful today in this tutorial. You have to go look at the Adobe video I made using this effect. It's a banger Instagram post. So go follow me over there on Instagram, watch that video, and please, I hope you check out my incredible sponsor, Squarespace. For online stores and marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is your best option for making a website. If you want an incredibly customized and personalized website, well, you're in luck because with Squarespace's new design system, Squarespace Blueprint, you'll be able to select from professionally curated templates. So you'll be able to pick a design that is good for your vibe or brand. And with their optimized SEO tools, you'll be able to get discovered way faster and way easier. And let's say you're a business person and you've got products you want to sell. And with Squarespace's flexible payments, you'll be able to accept every form of currency, Apple Pay, credit cards, PayPal. You'll even be able to use pay later features. So your online store can sell your goods and you'll be able to make it as convenient as possible for your customers. And lastly, if you don't want to rely on just the professionally designed templates that Squarespace offers, Squarespace's Fluid Engine lets you edit and customize from your launching off point. So you can use one of these templates as your starting point. And then from there, use all of the incredible editing tools that Squarespace offers for you to make every page look exactly how you like. And everybody, the best part is I got you a discount code. So if you go to squarespace.com slash Will Carmack, you'll be able to get 10% off your first website or domain. Thank you for sponsoring this video, Squarespace. I hope you all check them out. And don't forget, where there's a will, there's a way. My name is Will, and have a nice day.